welcome back everyone nick and lex here thank you so much for joining me in a new video of music with nick super excited today i got a request uh um from lee and this is uh for the band anthrax we're only gonna play anthrax songs today and um I've only heard a little bit of Anthrax, and it's because one of my best friends, actually, I, I would say my best friend in Germany, and also one of my best friends in the world, um, his name is Tobias, and he is um, a huge Anthrax fan, and uh, he, basically, some uh, time ago, we um, played this little kind of like game because um, uh, he was not really into Iron Maiden or like not really aware and uh, he is like well you know I do know a couple of songs like two and I was like oh my god this has to change and um well I told him you know what let's do this um I'll start listening to Anthrax and you can listen start you start listening to Iron Maiden and then so basically what I did I saw a live performance a, a full um concert but I don't remember the name but I saw that and he's like you know what I'm just gonna listen um what should I listen to and I'm like hey just listen to the first seven albums I think that's personally what I consider their best work and he did and they're short albums you know they're 35 minutes and stuff and then it gets a little bit longer a little bit proggier but he he, he uh finished with uh, seven son of a seven son that's the seventh album and that's actually also on prog archives because it is a little proggy but yeah so but i only did like i only watched that live performance i didn't do the whole like i don't know i just didn't have the time i was like i'm so sorry i still owe him a metallica reaction he wants me to react to the metallica to new metallica album i will do that of course but well this one is about anthrax a little bit of a backstory why i don't know about anthrax i don't really know why i was just like i guess it was hard to get you know in mexico so yeah but i do know who they are and i know of course anthrax ha has played with public enemy that i i used to listen to and i really like them um but yeah so let's go anthrax um we're gonna do uh we're gonna do from among the living the song among the living this is from 1987. All right. And we're going to then do, let's see here, State of Euphoria album finale. That's the song 1988. Then from the Persistence of Time album, we're going to do Time. This is from 1990. All right. Then Sound of White Noise, we're going to, uh, 1993, we're going to do the song Potter's Field. And then we're going to do We've Come uh, For You All. That's the album. Taking the Music Back. That's the song. And this is from... Oh, okay. This is like recent. Okay, 2003. All right. I didn't know. Not too recent, though. <laughs> 20 years ago. But I mean, it's still, you know, in the 2000s. Um, thank you so much, Lee, for requesting this. And also, I wanted to thank you one more time for coming to my birthday. You know, we had a great time um with all you guys and you know it was just wonderful to have you and um yeah we went to see snarky puppy and it was just wonderful wonderful experience so i do recommend seeing them live oh my god we this is our second time but this time the sound was just there and we we're right there in front of them and it was just magical these guys can play so good all right so uh, without further ado, um, let's get into the music. One moment. All right, here we go with the first song of the marathon, Among the Living. Here we go for some 80s thrash. Yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> let's go.
Yeah. Oof. I'm going to go back. I'm, I, I don't want to interrupt this. So I'm going to literally start from the beginning of the solo. But I do have to talk because <laughs> there's so much happening. Um, I will forget. You know, I, what I love about um, this band is they're way heavier than than I thought. Um, I guess this is like, you know, like kill them all, right? The lightning heavy, you know, like Metallica. But even though it has like dun, 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 dun 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 like the like the you know like the pantera riffs but it then goes like dun, 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 into that punk and that was something that metallica never did and i kind of like i like that because it's really like super thrash you know it's like i like how many changes they have and it's not progressive i, I can't say lee loves progressive music progressive rock progressive metal but i wouldn't consider this progressive but it's very just it's so cool that they do have all these time uh not time signature maybe but it at least changes in like you know rhythm and stuff I, i'm loving it really cool also the singer um is great and um man just the whole it's so good it's like uh, you know just it's like the time when thrash was just fresh and new and it sounds great and i'm i'm really loving this i'm i'm i get i don't know i i i just i think i have just like the smile on my face you know because i'm like yeah yeah you know they're doing this and wow they did that and it's very unexpected it's just very good like it's very very good i'm very happy thank you so much lee for choosing anthrax you know like my first anthrax um marathon i i think i've done some reactions maybe one or two uh, on the channel but not a full marathon so this is really cool thank you so so much let's take that whole solo from the top let's go
Yes, man. I, I loved, you know, that it had the, you know, the 80s. Um, I would say it had, you know, a nice intro. It had a cool, like, set. Like, I don't know. Like, it had, like, all these sections. Like, the chorus was in one, like, beat. And then just the, the song was in another. And I like that. I don't know, like that section it was going into. And um, the solo was really cool. And then also, it did feel like an outro, you know, like it was really cool. So really, I'm really loving this, you know. I'm, I mean, I've always been aware that they're a cool band, but I don't know. It, I, sometimes we just don't take the time to listen to stuff. And um, I'm super happy because I'm also... I sent Lee some music and he's like exploring, you know, something more he likes more than other. And, you know, that's totally normal. You know, everyone has a certain stuff, but the stuff that I like the most, he also likes, you know, so I'm super happy about that because, you know, you can't like everything, you know, so um, this was great. So um, I did notice that the song was a bit on the lower end and that's totally my fault because I just looked at the Spotify and it was a, maybe at 80%. So if that was too low, I super apologize. I'll do, I'll add a song at the end just because of that. Um, I, I'll, I mean, uh, Lee is so supportive. So I was going to do it anyway. So, but I'll do one more. I'm sorry because I just noticed. So if you, if that was very low, I do apologize. Um, so, uh, okay, next song is Finale uh, from State of Euphoria, and uh, let's go into it, you know, let's, let's do it. I'm having a great time, by the way. Thank you. Oof. Yeah. 
I mean, the the rhythm in Anthrax sometimes it's so different than you know Metallica. I I just read again, you know, the big four, um, you know, Me Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer, and Anthrax. But and I'm a huge Metallica fan and a huge Megadeth fan. At least Megadeth, I know very well because I had those CDs for years. You know, uh, Countdown to Extinction. Rust and Peace, Peace Cells. So, you know, I, and then, of course, uh, Euthanasia. Um, I had that one. And I think I had Hidden Treasures. So Me Megadeth, it was just, very, it was kind of hard to get. Um, also in Mexico. Metallica was kind of easy. I don't know. It was just, I guess, more commercially successful there. And Anthrax was just impossible. And Slayer, like, I never bought a Slayer record. But I do know them. I know Rain and Blood and all, you know, I know the hits, I guess. But what Anthrax does, it's that is something that I just don't hear in Metallica. It's a, just a different style. And I love this is from 1988. This is when Justice uh, for All came out. This is that's my, you know, favorite Metallica album has always been. I don't know what it is about it. You know, it's just the songs are just and they're kind of like repetitious, you know, but I just love the sound. And even though it doesn't have any bass, you know, Jason Newstead was the new guy and they totally kind of like play them wrong on that album, you know, but I just love the tunes. I love, you know, Black End and, and Justice for All and Eye of the Beholder and One and it's just a good album, you know, and uh, but but they don't have that. They don't have those, those like I don't know like. They don't have that 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 gallopy sound. I don't know. They just have. It sounds like Metallica, but it doesn't sound. I don't want to say as heavy as Anthrax because, I mean, I just the rhythm is a little bit faster in, in bands like Anthrax and Megadeth. I've noticed that too when I listen to Megadeth and also. Oh my God, the solos are just f sick in the, I mean, and in, in, right now these two solos were not as like insane, but um, I'm sure they're coming. But, you know, Kirk's solos have always been kind of like, you know, um, I, of course, when I listened to them the first time, I was blown away and I thought Kirk Hammett was the most amazing guitar player on the planet. And then... I started listening to Iron Maiden solos and they're a little bit trickier, you know, and I, I don't, I don't know. And, um, and then of course, when, when I started listening to Megadeth, those solos are like insane, you know, Chris Poland, Marty Friedman on the guitar. It's just like, that's different, a different level, you know, but yeah, let's see, um, what, what time brings here. Uh, the, the next song is time. And, uh, but yeah, so far, so good, man. This is so good. really, really good, um, really good marathon. Let's go with time. And this, so this was from '88. So '86, '80, no '87, '88. This is '90. So this is when you know my favorite Pantera album came came out, Cowboys from Hell, and the Black album, which I do you know love, but and also Countdown. I think Countdown to Extension is '90. If I'm not mistaken. Or oh, it could be Rust in Peace. I don't really know. Like, I'm a little bit rusty. Rusty um, on that. But 1990. So, yeah. So, we saw the Black Album. Let's see if they also changed directions into, you know, Grunge was at an all high. Let's see what they were doing and with time. Let's go. I like it.
I don't know when to pause I, since I don't know the songs at all like I don't even know where they're gonna go there's no uh sign of slowing down here like it's not um now I'm not saying that the black album by Metallica is like not heavy it's freaking heavy it's, I think it's just a bit slower um you know sad but true enter Sandman you know there's so many good songs on that album but it, it it just it has a more commercial approach you know about unforgiven and nothing else matters i think that just what sold the album a lot more for the band and i think um what was his name bob rock he did a fantastic job he he was like you know just do shorter songs write better solos be i don't know you know just be ah, i don't know but I mean, it worked and look where they are now, you know, so I guess, you know, Anthrax was more like, hey, you know, there's other bands, you know, slowing down. Um, let's get heavier. You know, I just that's what I feel. It still sounds exactly as heavy as in the 80s. So I love it. Really cool. I can't wait for the solo. Let's see. Let's go. Yeah, like I said, oh, like I said, they're literally like heavier and then I don't know. They're just getting heavier with age. You know, the drummer is just insane. Uh, in comparison to the thrash metal that I, you know, listen to, uh, Nick Menza 
uh, who unfortunately passed away on stage um, for Megadeth. He, I don't know, he was not as heavy. And then Lars, you know, is obviously not that heavy. So when it comes to drumming and just the bass and I think the whole rhythm section, I think it's a little bit heavier than, I don't know, Megadeth. There's so much Megadeth out now that is obviously super heavy. But I just know the first five, the first five Metallica albums I know by heart. And then what came after, you know, I haven't really been following them. I know it's Load and Reload and Sand Anger and... um all you know all that stuff but i never really listened to it like i really like stopped listening to metallica i still love them to death you know like and we're gonna see them in five days so i'm super excited about that but um but yeah no anthrax is definitely very very heavy like i, I mean i guess i know why they call them you know the big four you know they're just the heaviest thrash bands okay so now let's see um, we've come for you all. This is from, is this right? Let me see. Give me one second. Uh, did I, did I skip something? Yes, I skipped a song. I skipped so a song. We're going to play, um, Potter's Field. This is from 93. So let's see what they were doing in 93. That's when I think, um, Load was, came out. Uh huh. So let's see, because Load was already, that was a, a departure from, you know, the Black album. That's when it sounded more like that album to me. I mean, it had some heavy tracks, but it was more like James was more like doing the whole country thing. Not country, but it just sounded more like, and I, I totally understand, you know, bands just change with time and they want to try something different too. They don't want to play the same stuff forever. And but the, the good thing is when you see them live, they pretty much play, you know, their their 80s stuff and um, and a few others. OK, let's go with Potter's Field, 1993. This is a journey into sound. The, the album opener. Sound of white noise.
they're not slowing down it sounded a little bit like let me see something here um was it like a different singer um let's see persistence of time let's see vocals joey belladonna and then i think the one guy that i do know that i've always recognized because of his beard scott ian yeah let's see the next album um sound yeah yeah i kind of recognized i was like something sounds different it's still dance bits on lead guitar scott ian and then um the vocals were different they sounded a little bit more and i don't want to use the word grunge because not just because it's 1993 it doesn't it didn't sound grungy at all it just sounded like a different vocalist you know but very heavy and just very good and very cool so now so this was from 90 to 93 now 2003 so 10 years after let's see <clears throat> just to have a little bit of context here so let's look at wait a minute let's go back i'm on wikipedia it's always like this white screen i wish it had a dark mode i don't know it does i don't think it does uh we've come for you all let's see and this no it's the same guy john bush on vocals and pretty much yeah a different lineup drummer and stuff and Frank Bello, I think, has been on bass for a long time. So, yeah. So, okay. Let's check out this song. And we'll add one more. And I wanted to see if there was any Warner Brothers. But the only thing they've done in War with Warner Brothers is an a big four. But that's a that's a, a DVD. Um, So, I just wanted to make sure that I had something from Warner Brothers by uh, Anthrax. But hey, let's see how they take it. There is some UMG. I'm always kind of like scared now because I got literally two, 22 marathons got blocked and I had to dispute them all and then they got blocked again. So some I can't like literally put on YouTube anymore. I don't know. It's because I'm not pausing as much anymore or if it's just we ran out of double, uh, Warner Brothers music. I, I don't know. But um, let's just try. Or I could also do maybe a different band. I don't want to, definitely I don't want to change the theme, but maybe we could add some, but I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, I don't want to change it up. I want to keep it uh, anthrax, you know? Okay, so let's go with uh, taking, taking the music back. This is the song, 2003, anthrax, let's go. They got definitely louder. Wow. That was like, you know, like full power. I had literally had to turn it down a little bit. the change a little bit it's not that you know that it's more i mean it, it, it just like you can hear that they've changed a bit you know it's not so common anymore to do the whole gallopy thing the thrash but it still sounds great you know 
and loud. I love it. Very cool. So I think, yes. Oh, that sounded like Rob Zombie. Was that Rob Zombie? No. Um, this one, I did feel it was as heavy, but a bit slower, a different style in music, but totally welcome, you know, for me. Um, you know, the drumming was not as, I don't know, as aggressive, I guess, you know. But hey, you know, when you do something for 20 years, you want to change, you know. So I've decided to go all the way back. Um, this is pretty, um, uh, let's see, it's a popular song, Madhouse, and this is from 1985. I hope you like this song, Lee, um, and it has 56 million plays, so I guess, yeah, people are going to like this, I guess, and it's from Def Jam. Let's see how Def Jam, that's so cool, Def Jam, isn't that Def Jam, like, a rap label um i don't know let me let me know but here we go with madhouse from spreading the disease 1985 this was during was this during right the lightning or was that 1984 i don't know justice for all was 1986 i don't know i don't remember i'm sorry Master of Puppets. Here we go, Mad Mad Madhouse. Here we go, Anthrax. <laughs> I like the cover. <laughs> it's time for your medication, Mr. Brown. <laughs> It sounds definitely more thrashy, you know, but the beginning, the chords uh, progression is literally Judas Priest um, from Desert, Desert, Desert Plains, 
Dun 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 Literally, it's so cool. Check it out. Awesome. I love the sound. I just love 80s metal, man. It's so good. I love it, man. I love, this is a great band. And I love how in the eighties they did this whole, like, doodle, doodle, doon, doodle, 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 doodle. like it, it always had like a little bit of a chromatic end, you know, a, a chord progression. So it sounds kind of like, I don't know. It just is very effective or the Egyptian scale, um, uh, or, you know, more, I don't know. It's just like this style that just sounds very metal, you know, and thrashy. And I just love it. Um, like Power Slave by Iron Maiden, you know. You know, that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> um, man, this was great. Thank you so much, Lee. This was so much fun. And um, I'm glad that I added this last song just to give it a... You know, a real, I'm sure, um, um, it, it also, please, everyone, if you're an Anthrax fan watching this video for the first time, you know, it's impossible to put all the best songs and all the songs that you love, you know, um, I'm sure if I would make a, like a Metallica or Megadeth, uh, marathon, I would pick, you know, like more deep cuts and, you know, the stuff that we do on the channel, we try to not play just the hits and the best of you know so i'm sure lee 
went in very carefully and picked maybe his favorites or just the songs that he think thinks don't get you know the um enough play and stuff so please you know just respect that in the comment section because i just i don't like that you just comment to be like oh why didn't you play this you know it, that's not what this is about let's have fun and let's have fun with what you know i reacted to so just to get that out of the way but thank you again lee thanks if you're new uh you know uh if you're new to the channel if this is your first time maybe like the channel maybe subscribe whatever you want but yeah have fun you know leave a nice comment um and you know just have fun thank you so much lee thank you for you know um subjecting me to this awesome band this is a really good band you know um i kind of bumped because i was like oh man i i uh this was already, you know, when this music kind of like, I mean, they were there in the, in the nineties, you know, and stuff. Um, but it would have been cool to discover them at the same time as Megadeth and Metallica, you know, but well, you know, you know, the story of me, you know, living in Mexico was just kind of difficult to get a hold of many things. And, um, I remember spending all my money when I went to Guadalajara, which was six hours away, where you could actually buy pretty much anything, you know, it was a big city, but I didn't really know that much, and there was no internet, so I just bought all the Iron Maiden albums, literally all of them, on one day, and then I was just in love with Iron Maiden for the longest time, you know, so, and then Judas Priest, and then, you know, Ingrid Malmsteen, and then I started to play guitar and then once you play guitar you kind of grow out of bands and more into like solo artists or guitar players stuff like that so yeah I was just like same thing happened with uh, bands like ACDC and you know Ozzy Osbourne it was just like and I love Randy Rhodes I love his playing so much but I was I discovered that way too late and I was already listening to different stuff so it was just kind of like i don't know like a missed opportunity but that's why i love this channel so much because i can go back and react and show you guys you know uh, what i think you know so awesome thanks again so much for being here and i'll see you guys in the next video